Welcome to the third episode in which we create some simple multiplayer mechanic, but with the Unity transport system. Okay, um, we are going to be looking into sending data today, and we're also going to be looking into uh, creating structures that will be used for both the server and also the client. And this effort today is going to be um, started with the shared folder. So we're going to click on the shared folder, and we're going to create ourselves a, um, a new script that I call net message. This is of course going to be a base class in which all the message we want to send, all the different type of message, is this a position update, is this a chat message, is it anything like that, is going to go through this interface here. Actually I said interface, it's going to be a base class. So I'm going to clean up everything, even the mono behavior. Since we are um, creating stuff in the shared folder, I don't want to have any traces of uh, mono behavior in here. Here we're going to be creating something that's going to be part of every single net message. And the way I'd like my, uh, well, my, the architecture I want to go for, the way I'd like it to go is with a simple byte at the beginning of every single message that lets you know what type this message is. So this could be, uh, this is what we call the opcode, operation code. And I'd like to create it in a different script actually. So I'll go back, create a new shared folder, a script, call it opcode. Just like this. Um, and then the, this new script actually called opcode. I'm just going to get rid of every single thing, create a public. Um, it's going to be enum called operation code, just like so. And in here, I'm going to start laying down things that I'll need in the future. Or actually, let's just do it for this tutorial. So um, we'd like to make something for a chat message. So I'm going to say chat underscore message. And that opcode is going to be equal to one. Later, you can do, say, for example, player. Um, position or actor position to something like that player position would be a bit odd in case you have multiple player but oh actually no, it wouldn't be a bit odd because in the start of your player message you could put which player it is uh, basically you are going to define what is part of that chat message but all I needed right here was the enum so let's go back to the net message and now I'm, I'm gonna say that every single net message has an operation code and I'll do it this way with a public operation code code that's actually going to be a set and get something else that um, is going to be part of every single net message is a serialize and also deserialize uh, function serializing is going to be for when you have a message to send you need to pack it up in one little piece of byte array um, and you need to send that over and when you receive it you receive a byte array and then you have to unpack it. so just think as it uh, as zip and unzip if you're not familiar with the term um, and it's going to be virtual because of course this is going to be a default one but everybody's going to have a different serialized function so serialize serialize and just beneath that i'm going to have the of course the deserialize uh this one is also going to not return anything and, uh, and you'll see why um it could return something if you wish but in the structure i'm going to go for in the architecture i'm going to go for I'm just going to send it as a reference. So I just want to have these in there. I don't need to define anything in there. Uh, maybe you could do a debug.log and say, hey, the uh, serialized function was not implemented in this.name, which is going to return you the, the children's name for this. Um, OK. And now to give you an example of a unfinished message, let's create ourselves, a, uh, for example, a net chat message. So that's going to be um, how I'm going to write all the messages. So net message, that's the base class. And then when I have a real message, I could just put a underscore in between net and then that. Um, chat message is actually for a message in the chat. If it was like player position, I would write player position, not player position message, um, something like that. All right. So we have our net chat message. We are going to make sure it inherit from net message. And what can we override? Well, um, well, of course, we have to override those two. So for sure, I'm going to put them in here. Public override, override. Um, and when we serialize, we are going to, we need to assign the opcode somewhere, but I don't know if we should do it in the serialize. Maybe we could do that. Yeah, we could do that right here in the serialize, or we could say in the constructor, because I'm going to be creating those uh, through the constructor. We can say code is equal to opcode.chat message in this case. Okay, so 
thus far, we've only defined the structure of a message and it's not completed. We, we're going to come back to here. We're going to be sending some parameter in the serialize. We're going to be doing a couple of things um, for sure. But right now we've got enough to start looking into sending this message uh, through the client. So I'm going to go on my base client and I'm going to create myself a new function down here um, that I'll call actually, you know what, I'll, I'll just stick it here. Um, I'll call it send server. So public virtual void send to server or send server. And I'm just going to send a net message the base class because we don't know what we're going to be sending. We, it, we can't start defining something for every single type of message we have because we might have uh, 60 or 40 or you know, a, a couple for sure. And in here, we're going to be introducing the new class data stream writer. Remember, we had a, uh, a reader just a little bit earlier when we were reading through the messages. So here, well, now we're writing. So we are need a writer. And to send a message to the server, we have to hit, of course, the driver as we always do, but then begin send with whomever is going to be the receiver in this case. So um, the receiver in this case is only the server. So connection, when we're on the client side, uh, connection is the server. That's the only thing it can mean. So we send it to that person and then it wants a writer. So it actually returns you a writer that you write in. And when you're done, you send in some data. So here we're going to say um, out writer, just like so. So now these two are connected together. So the writer is here and now we have to write. So <laughs> let's use our message called serialize. And here I'm going to be sending a reference to the writer. Of course, this is not defined just yet, but we'll come back to the serialize in a second. And once we're done, once the serialize class will fill everything inside of our data stream, we are going to call end send with the writer itself. Okay, so let's go through that flow extremely quickly. We create a writer. We um, start sending something to who knows, in this case, it would be the server. And by doing that, we also connect the data stream writer to that very specific connection. Then we fill in the message. So we fill in the writer with whatever message we want to send. In this case, operation code one for chat message and later on, uh, you know, a string of text. And once we're done, we go back and we send that message. It's as simple as that. Um, for the moment, however, we're going to need to upgrade our serialized method. We said we're going to be sending a reference to the writer, which I didn't do then because we didn't introduce the data stream writer, but now we have. And do note that I've did that in the base class, but I'm also going to need to do it in the chat message. So here. Okay. And um, I lied earlier. I said we were gonna that we're actually sending the message. We're not sending anything here because the writer nothing happens with it. Here we have to fill information about the chat message. We don't have much right now. We don't even have a message to send. But what we could do at the moment, we can at least put the byte. So writer, write byte, code. Now code is type of enum. So let's just make sure we cast it as a byte prior. And by doing that, we are writing one in our writer because, well, uh, here, <laughs> chat message is equal to one. That's what we're writing. Awesome. Okay, so, so that should be sent over and we are going to test it out. So to test it out, I'm going to go check where it should land. So when we're on, on here, well, what's going on here? Oh, it needs to be passed with the ref keyword. I forgot to do that. I forgot to put the ref in front of it. That was my bad. Same thing for chat message. Okay, so let's go through the flow. Um, I need to call this function from pretty much anywhere in my code. So this is part of the mono behavior, right? So somewhere in my mono behavior, I'll be able to call send to server with the proper chat message. And we'll do it in a minute. You'll see how easy it is. When that happens, we start writing to the server. We put data from our message inside of our data stream and we send it over to the server. At which point the server constantly just checking his loop 
to update his message bump. And then in here, one of the connection, we don't know whom, but one of the connection has a message for us. And that message is type of data. So here. And uh, at that point, we are going to read that byte, which right now is actually upcode because we write all of our message as an upcode and also it's type of byte, but that doesn't really matter so much. Um, we write it and we can say got upcode as operation code. So that should write one technically. If we're able to send our data, the server will receive it and that should write one. And we're going to test this out with this small piece of UI that I've done. Here is, it's basically just an input field with a button called submit. That input field has a very simple uh, script to it, which um, points towards the input field. And when we click submit, the button is also bind to that function. Just so you know, that button here is bound on chat message on submit click. So everything here is connected. And what we're going to do, because I don't have a clean way of doing it now, I mean, that's just temporary code. I'm just going to find the base client, which is just a reference to my, my server, my, my, my client script. So this, well, technically this, and I'm going to call send to server. So send to server. This one takes in a chat and uh, not a chat message. It takes in a net message and that's where we create our magic. So here, because we're part of the logic that's going to be launching this message, we know what type of message it is. It's actually a net chat message. We can say this is message new and that's all we need. So by doing new, it creates a new instance of that message in the constructor. I assign the upcode and then when we call serialize eventually in the send, it puts that upcode inside of here send that message and we're going to give it a try. So best case scenario, everything works on the first go and we're going to receive the number one in our console that will be um, spewed out by the server. Worst case scenario, we're going to have to go back and look. So let's hit submit. Got one as an operation code and that was sent from the server. So update message pump on the base server. All right, so that's some very good news. Let's go ahead and try to just make our message a little bit more, a uh, little bit more important or a little bit more meaningful, you could say. In my net chat message, I know that the zero to eight first bits, they're reserved for the opcode. And that's because um, it's a byte. So a byte is eight bits. And then after that, we could say, well, eight to 256 could be the string message. Yeah, we could do that. So that would mean that yes, we have an opcode, but then beneath that, we can have a public string um, and just call it, I want to call it message, but we have, we have the word message so often here. Uh, this is the actual chat message. There we go. I'll put it as a set get. Oh, you know what? Here we go. Now, what we could do is when we create that chat message, we send it through here. And this way, um, we have it as a parameter. We still input the same opcode because that's the one for this very specific type of, of message. But now we have to put it inside of the serialize as well. So after, and that's very important, you need to get the order right, right? So you can't write this byte and then well, you can't write the message here and then write the opcode. The opcode always have to be on top. Um, so once we've done that, we're going to be writing a, we could be writing a fixed string. Hmm. We said we're going to write the fixed string of, of 256 minus eight. So let's see if we have an option for that. Well, we have the option to write multiple bytes here and we could say, Hey, let's write multiple bytes and, um, you know, that's going to be a, a byte array made out of our chat message. So we would be converting our string to a byte array. But just for the sake of, of not making things too, too complex, um, I'm going to be writing a fixed string of maybe um, 128. And that fixed string will be, of course, the chat message, which means this is no longer relevant here. Um, well, it is, but you have to calculate it in a different way. All right. 
Now, just like that, our message got appended. Um, we have our first byte and then we have a bunch of other bytes for the rest of the chat message. Just to see if it works, we're going to go back on the base server. And here, inside of the base server, we're going to adapt our code in the in the um, event type data just for this very specific message at the moment, of course. We're going to say, hey, string um, chat message is going to equal to the string dot read fix string 128. So you understand that in um, when we were to encode, oh, wait. Oh, here, my bad. Um, we have to declare this as a fix string 128. So you're going to realize here that in our message, we first write a byte and then we write a fix string 128. If we go back to the way we, uh, we read it, so in this case, that's where we read it. Well, we read it in the same order. So we read it, hey, it's a byte first and then it's a 128. So we got one as operation code and got chat message as chat message, why not? <laughs> I just want to see if I receive the data from one end to the other. So that being said, let's see if everything compiles. Oh, there is no argument given. Okay, so we've changes. Uh, we, we actually changed the um, the constructor here. So we're gonna have to go ahead and input the message in here as well. In this case, it would be chat input dot uh, value, no text. Okay, that's what we have in the input field. So, if we give this a try now, and I am to press on play. Let's see if we're connected. We are connected and I'm going to press on submit. We got nothing as a chat message because that's nothing in the box. Now I'm going to put something, got 5465, blah, 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 as a chat message. All right, so we got it. We were able to send data over. Now it's not really pretty and it's not really scalable. It has a lot of typos, but um, that's going to be it for today. In the next episode, we're going to be wrapping this up here in the server and, and uh, putting the logic somewhere else. So as you can see here, we have our net message deserialized, but we never actually use it. So we're going to make use of that so we can um, isolate the logic of how we decompile this message. We won't have to do it directly in here. So we won't have to say, hey, if operation code is, is chat message, then, then read it in such a way. Instead, we're going to be porting that over to this class. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you there. Cheers.